Good morning, South. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance with Mr. Michael O'Brien. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The results are in. Good morning once again, and welcome to this edition of the Falcon Report for this Friday, the 2nd of October, 2020, a day B2. I'm Aiden Andrews. We now know who will be representing each of the grades in class council leadership. We'll begin with the class of 2025, whose president will be Maya Miller. The vice president will be Chelsea Fraser. The secretary will be Jayla McLean. The treasurer will be Jolena Bedet. And the ambassador will be Dua Baig. On to the class of 2024, the president will be Emily Nochter. The vice president will be Dory Chow. The secretary will be Joshua Silvestri. The treasurer will be Ethan Fazal. The ambassador will be Gabriella Cox. And now the class of 2023, the president will be Jade Hornick. The vice president will be Sophia Noguera. The secretary will be Casey Chong. The treasurer will be Mohammed Raymond. And the ambassador will be Katie Ramirez. Now the class of 2022, the president will be Vanessa Cruz. The vice president will be Karen Dial. The secretary will be Julia Valdez. The treasurer will be Dara Kane. And the ambassador will be Caitlin Viden. Finally, the class of 2021, the president will be Vanessa Mercado. Serving as co-vice president will be Sophia Longid and Marshley Eugene. For secretary, Haley Roberts. For treasurer, Tyra Manning. And for ambassador, Andra Perry. Congratulations to all the winners. We'll hear more from them next week on the Falcon Report. Just as any other period in the hybrid school system, lunchtime now faces a very new reality. From the cafeteria layout to the food service, and in so many other ways, lunch looks very different this year. Graciela Alvarez has the latest. That's right, Aiden. Lunchtime looks incredibly different compared to years past, with numerous changes to accommodate our updated safety regulations. With traditional lunch tables having been packed away, the empty space has been replaced with individual student desks for proper distancing. To increase safety, all food is pre-packaged with cold lunches being pre-prepared in wraps and sauces safely sealed in containers. On top of this, South's amazing custodians work tirelessly to sanitize the lunchroom at every opportunity they get, making the tables usable for the hungry students. Our administration implemented an eight-period lunch to lessen the amount of people per period. So this year as a cafeteria proctor eighth period, it's, it's been different, it's been unique. It's been great that they added the extra period because it allows just for an easier transition for these students. Uh, and it really does allow for us to keep up with the safety hazards. The perks of being an upperclassman haven't vanished as sophomores, juniors, and seniors retain the privilege to go outside during their lunch periods and get some fresh air. Of course, temperature checks are still in place for returning upperclassmen to ensure the safety of their younger peers. Thanks to the United States Department of Agriculture, all food will be provided free of charge until December 31st of this year to eliminate the burden of paying for lunch during a pandemic. Thanks, Graciela. New students in the science research course have been kept occupied with a creative how-to project. More at these efforts is Sarah Singh. Sophomores in Jeffrey C's and Melissa Terragrosa's science research class explore and showcase their research capabilities when put to the task of creating an educational experience for the class as a whole. Class instructors provide their students with short rubrics and creative freedom to create a project all on their own. Prompted with instructing the class on a specific skill that each student possesses, classmates watched and learned in intrigue and awe 
as they were educated on various topics, such as making the perfect waffle, properly surf fishing, performing a jump shot in basketball, and painting a self-portrait using watercolor. Along with detailing the required mythology, students had to research background and historical information pertaining to their topic and offer up rationale for consideration as to why their topic is so important to retain for future life applications. A great start to the science research course. And on to another ongoing project, career and money management students have constructed their own economic paradise in coordination with the Create an Island project. We'll turn to Dash Osler Pierce with the details. Last week in Mr. Joffrey Carr's career and money management class, students were given the opportunity to imagine and create their own civilizations. After selecting a partner of their choice, the business duos began to brainstorm ideas for how to create their virtual island. After drafting a plan, students were then able to use what they had learnt in their class to create their own style of economy to best suit their island, from command economies, market economies, and even their own blend of other systems. In a PowerPoint presentation, the management students compiled their research, bringing to life their island, topping off their civilization with a map and flag, finally creating a fully-fledged functional society. When the Falcon Report returns, we'll welcome Hamid Abdul to tell us all about the textbook and instrument distribution. But first, a bird's eye view of school sanitization. The Falcon Report will be right back. Yeah, after school is the best. A lot of clubs this year are postponed due to social distancing rules. But Culture Society is still going on. Our first meeting is today at the Carbonero Fields. Stay connected, even while the park's out. What is this? A question about rap slash hip hop? The average response takes 2.34 seconds. That means I have to know the answer now. Aha! No! Impressive projects all around. As of this week, our fully remote peers have relied on the tools of the web to replace much needed materials, such as calculators, textbooks, and more. But this past week, administrators and teachers worked tirelessly to gather all that these students would need and facilitated their pickup. Hamid Abdul joins us now with insight on the recent distribution. After eagerly waiting to collect their much anticipated textbooks and musical instruments from school, our fully remote students were finally able to get their wish. Teachers used Friday evening of last week to prepare plastic bags and textbooks, which were distributed as students were brought out by their first and last name. An organized system of student rotations allowed the remote learners to obtain their supplies quickly and safely. Accompanying textbooks, students also received their musical instruments to play in band and orchestra in conjunction with students who attend school. With students now able to access a musical instrument and hardcover textbooks, remote learners are now fully prepared for the school year ahead. And now on to weather, let's welcome Kiefer Villarays with the weekend forecast. We've seen some pretty inconsistent forecasts these past few weeks. Could you tell us if this will continue, Kiefer? Well, you're not wrong, as this weekend welcomes a couple versions of weather, starting with today. Brace for light showers this morning, with plenty of sun and clouds later in the day at 65 degrees. Let's take a look at tomorrow. Expect pleasant fall temperatures in the high 60s as the sun will shine bright from dusk to dawn. On Sunday, however, we'll take a slight drop of temperature to 66 degrees, with a larger presence of clouds throughout the day. There might be late showers in the evening, so don't rule out the chances. Just as I said before, we're in for a pretty occupied weekend. Stay safe, South. Back to you, Aiden. That's all for this edition of the Falcon Report. From our entire staff, stay safe and have a great weekend, South. <laughs>